And one of the reasons I've been saying that the system is so corrupt and it's so rigged is not only what happens at the voter's booth, and you know things happen, folks. I watched Obama the other day saying, oh, but this is the foundation of the system. How can he say it? And yet eight years ago, he's on a clip talking about Chicago and essentially how the voting is rigged in Chicago. You know, give me a break. Take a look at it. Eight years ago, it's all over the place. But one of the reasons I say it's rigged is because Hillary Clinton, nothing to do with what was found recently, Hillary Clinton should never, ever, based on everything that took place, be allowed to run for the presidency of the United States. She shouldn't be allowed. She should have been disqualified a long time ago. And when you read the nasty WikiLeaks, the horrible things said about Catholics, and the horrible things said about evangelicals, and the horrible things said about Bernie Sanders, what they said about Bernie Sanders. I mean, say what you want. What they said about Bernie Sanders is rather incredible. And then they have their superdelegates, and they had all of the people stacked against him. He never had a chance, folks. And you know what? The worst thing he did was backing her, because he would have gone down as a great figure in political history in this country, but once he did that, he sold his soul to the devil. But we'll take the Bernie Sanders voters because my trade policies are much tougher and much stronger and much better than his. And we're going to have a lot of trade, but it's going to be a two-way highway, not a one-way road out, believe me. As FDR once said, government by organized money is just as dangerous as government by organized mob. It's true. True. So true. Hillary believes money and power, not truth and justice, should rule the day. We have one ultimate check on Hillary's corruption, and that is the power of voting, November 8th. So the only way we're going to beat the corruption is to show up and vote by the tens of millions, including millions of people voting for the first time in their entire lives. Vote with all your heart and soul because we are going to make America great again. Okay, just remember that. We are. Restoring honesty to our government and the rule of law to our society will be a very, very high priority of my presidency. Yeah. Haven't we had enough drama with the Clintons? Yeah. Bill Clinton was impeached for lying and obstructing justice, signed the worst trade deal in history, NAFTA, which emptied our country of its manufacturing jobs, and he doesn't even have the right anymore because of what he did to practice law. Hillary has brought scandal or destroyed virtually everything she's touched. Look at Whitewater. Look at the cattle futures. Look at jobs in upstate New York, a disaster. Or look at Syria, Iraq, Libya. And now, look at the mess she's in with these emails. And that'll last for years. You think that's going away? That'll be there. For years, she'll be fighting it. This will be the year the American people say, enough is enough. This will be the year the American people break with the bitter failures of the past and embrace a new and really optimistic future. We have such potential. My contract with the American voter begins with a plan to end government corruption. I want the entire corrupt Washington establishment 
to hear and heed the words we, we, not me, we, are about to say. When we win on November 8th, we are going to Washington, D.C., and we are going to drain the swamp. You know, when I first heard that term, I hated it. I said, oh, that's so hokey. That is so hokey. But I said, look, let's give it a shot. I tried it. The place went crazy. Then I said, maybe we'll try it again. The place went crazy. And now I like it. You know, great, great singers, a lot of great artists, great singers, Frank Sinatra. So Frank Sinatra didn't like my way when he first sang it. And then he noticed the audience liked it a lot. And then it went out, became number one, like big. And all of a sudden, he started to love that song my way, right? So drain the swamp. At the core of my contract is my plan to bring back our jobs that have been stolen from me. Right now, 70 million American women and children live in poverty or near the brink of poverty. America has lost one-third of its manufacturing jobs since Bill and Hillary's NAFTA. One-third. America has lost, listen to this, because it's not even a number. I, honestly, I thought it was a typo. I thought it was 700 factories or 7,000. America has lost 70,000 factories since China entered the World Trade Organization. And I'm very close to China. I've done great deals with China. Their tenants and buildings of mine in New York. China's wonderful. I'm not angry at China. I'm angry at our people for allowing them to get away with it. I have the biggest bank in the world, the Chinese bank, far bigger than any other bank, a tenant of mine. I sell them condos. I own building, a building in San Francisco, a big building in New York, because of China. China is wonderful. But they're getting away with murder. Mexico's getting away with murder. Their people are smarter than our leaders. Their leaders are smarter. They're more cunning. They're more streetwise. Something's different. But we're going to stop it. Don't worry, we're building the wall. Don't worry. <laughs> We are living through the greatest jobs theft in the history of the world. That's what's happened. This is the single greatest jobs theft in the history of the world. There's never been NAFTA. One-way street, out. One-way street, out. You know, I always say, they get the jobs, they get the factories and plants, right? They get the money. We get, what do we get? We get the drugs, we get the unemployment. We get the drugs, the unemployment. Hillary's goal is to send millions and millions more jobs out of our country, because that's what her special interests want. I'll have over $100 million invested in the campaign. My money, okay? If I don't pull this off, I'm going to feel very foolish. <laughs> But you know what? It's money I don't take from special interests and lobbyists and, and donors. And we've had tremendous success with the small donors, $61 a head. No, Republic, uh, no Republican has ever come close. We've raised millions and millions of dollars in campaign contributions from small donors, people that put up $61. And no Republican's ever done that. Very few people have ever done it. But it's been beautiful to watch. They're just 
They, they love our country. I love our country. That's why I'm doing it. And again, remember, remember, I had a good time on the other side. You know, when you talk about insider, outsider, I was on the other side for a long time. I did very well on the other side. But I also love our country. And I see what was happening. And we were going in such a wrong direction. We weren't going to have a country left anymore. Between an Iran deal, where we give them back $150 billion, how about we give them $1.7 billion in cash? Remember, we thought it was $400 million, right? Remember, it was $400 million. You know what that is? That's this stage. No, much bigger. Triple it. Going up to the ceiling. That's what cash is, 400 million. And we were wrong. It wasn't 400 million. It was 1.7 billion in cash, airplane loads. And then Obama said it had nothing to do with the hostages, but it did. The hostages wouldn't be released until this cash came. 1.7 billion dollars, and they wouldn't release the hostages until they got the cash. And then they humiliated us. See, everybody forgets. I never forget. Never forget. Then they humiliated us with the 10 sailors, right? And they would have kept them forever. Not if I'm president. But they would have kept them forever, except that the cash, the 150 billion, was to be paid two days from the time of their capture. So instead of saying, hey, folks, you're in a little bit the wrong water, like, could you move over here, right? You know, hey, get out of here. They captured them, brought them to their knees, humiliated those 10 people. For the rest of their lives, they humiliated and humiliated the United States of America after they made one of the great deals ever. And then they ride around and they, you know, do things around our boats. They circle us. Oh, they wouldn't be doing that. And. Then they take their fighter jets and they ride very, very close. They do all sorts of things. No, no. It's, uh, you know, it's amazing. We gave them everything. And now, instead of thanking us, they feel emboldened. They feel emboldened. So, you watch. We're going to be very, very careful. We have to be very careful. You know, signing nuclear deals is a good thing, not a bad thing. But Kerry never walked. They won every single point. They got everything. This is worse than if we had no deal. The worst deals are the kind that are worse than if you had no deal. So with all of the things, with all of the stupidity that I see, how about where they capture, they're going to deport 800 people. And these are tough ones. These are tough people. And they made a little mistake. So they were going to deport them. You know what I'm talking about. They became, sorry, United States citizen. Welcome aboard. So the 800 people, it's like the money. Instead of $400 million, it was 1.7. It's always worse. It's never better. So the 800 people, instead of being deported, they pressed the wrong button. You know what the wrong button is? This. The wrong button is somebody got cash. That's what I think, okay? Now, of course, how would I know a thing like that? They'll criticize me. They'll say, that is a terrible thing. Just like they said, how can Donald Trump complain about voter fraud? There's no voter fraud that goes on. Really? Yeah. Watch, watch, be careful, watch. So the 800 people, instead of being deported, what happened? Congratulations, they are now citizens of the United States. These are rough citizens. But we made a mistake there, too. Instead of 800 people, it turned out to be 1,800 people. Our country doesn't win anymore. We don't win with ISIS. We don't win with trade. We don't win with borders. We're going to start winning again, folks. If you elect me, I'm, I'm doing this for you, believe me. Hillary is going to raise taxes up to 45%. Massively expand regulation, shut down American energy, which is a disaster, and push through terrible trade deals that offshore our jobs to the benefit of her donors and special interests. Her policies, in my opinion, 
will cause major, major recession and maybe even depression. A Trump administration will stop Trans-Pacific Partnership, a horror show. Really bad deal. That's a really bad deal. We're going to renegotiate NAFTA, and if we're not going to stand up, I'll tell you what. Again, China, we're going to have a good relationship with China. I have a great relationship with China. But we are going to stand up to China on its massive currency manipulation, because they're beating our companies because of currency manipulation. We're going to lower taxes on American business from 35 percent to 15 percent. We're going to cut taxes for middle-class families by hundreds of billions of dollars. My infrastructure plan will provide help for projects like the proposed Interstate 11. Do you know what that is? Which would connect Phoenix with Las Vegas and other areas. Everybody wants it. It's time we have some — something new. You ever notice we don't build bridges anymore? We don't build tunnels anymore. You go to China, they have bridges all over the place, tunnels. We don't build anymore. And we don't make anything anymore, relatively speaking. Everything comes in from lots of different countries. We will also unleash the full power of American energy, including shale, oil, natural gas, and clean coal. We'll put our miners back to work, folks. We're going to put our miners back to work. We will become a rich nation once again. But to be a rich nation, we must also be a safe nation. A Trump administration will secure and defend the borders of the United States. And yes, we will build a wall. I'm very proud to say that we have the endorsement of America's ICE. ICE. You know what ICE is. These are tough, strong, good people. And also, 16,500, all of them, the Border Patrol officers. The first time they have ever made an endorsement for a president of the United States. First time they've ever done it. When Hillary Clinton was Secretary of State, she allowed thousands of the most dangerous criminal aliens in the world to go free inside America because their home countries wouldn't take them back. So we would catch these killers, these drug lords, these gang members. We'd bring them back to their country, and very intelligently, their country would say, we don't want them. We don't want them. We're not taking them back. So they'd call the Secretary of State. She'd say, oh, they don't want them back. Oh, bring them back. And that's why we have a lot of problems. We take them back. And we have people begging us not to take them back. And I guarantee you, as President, there won't be one instance, not one instance, where we take them back. Not one. These were people guilty of murder, assault, rape, and all manner of violent crime. Countless Americans are killed by illegal immigrants because our government won't do its job. These include amazing Americans, and you saw that incredible friend of mine, who just spoke incredibly, by the way. The pain that so many people are going through. Remembrance Project, incredible people. Americans like Sergeant Brandon Mendoza of Mesa, Mesa, Arizona, who was killed by an illegal immigrant with a criminal record a mile long, who should have been deported. Everybody wanted him deported. People begged that he be deported. But the government under Obama refused to act killed. I've spent time with his unbelievable mother, and they're devastated. Your life can never be the same. 28-year-old park ranger Chris Egel was shot and killed by a drug cartel hit squad responsible for a number of murders all over Mexico. Chris died trying to protect our borders from drug and weapon trafficking into the Oregon Pipe Cactus National Monument. They were all over the place, and he died. Died. Violently died. 33-year-old Phoenix police officer, Eric Erfel, a young cancer survivor, was murdered by a previously deported illegal immigrant with felony warrants and 
with a record so long you wouldn't believe it. How did these people get into our country? Nick was shot twice. Nick was shot twice in the back of the head. 21-year-old Grant Ronebeck, whose father's here someplace. Where is his father? You are fantastic. You are fantastic. Grant was working at a convenience store in Mesa, Arizona, when he was shot point-blank by an illegal immigrant. His illegal immigrant killer, despite a tremendously horrible criminal record, was out on, and right now, was out on bond and roams free. When I become president, you can count on this. When I become president, this crime wave, this needless, senseless crime wave will end, and it'll end immediately. We are going to cancel all federal funding for sanctuary cities. We are going to impose tough prison sentences for illegal immigrants who return after a previous deportation. In other words, we get them out, they come right back. We get them out. Look at Kate Steinle, San Francisco. He came back five times. So we get them out. They come back. We say, listen, do it again. You're going five years. Do it again. After that, you're going 10 years. You know what's going to happen? They're not coming back anymore, folks. Not complicated. We will end illegal immigration, deport every last criminal alien, and save American lives. And we'll do it quickly. We will also repeal the Obama-Clinton defense sequester and rebuild our badly depleted military. We have tremendous military support, unbelievable military support. And having, as you know, General Flynn here and having uh, so many of the generals at our side. In fact, we have, where is General Flynn? He's around here somewhere. Incredible guy. General Kellogg, we have such incredible people. We have, in fact, the endorsement of over 200 admirals and generals and 22 Medal of Honor recipients. Our Air Force is the smallest and oldest it has ever been. And my plan builds the modern, advanced fighter aircraft we need. Fighters like those that will be stationed at Luke Air Force Base. Luke. You ever see our fighters are so old that they don't even make parts for them anymore? You've seen it. You've seen the documentaries. They're all over the place. They have to go to the plane graveyards and to museums, old airplane museums, to get parts. This is what our great people are flying in. Our army is the smallest. That's right. But we give beautiful new stuff to people we hardly even know. That's right. We're really run by a bunch of geniuses. Our army is the smallest it's ever been since World War II. And we will significantly increase both the size of our army and the emphasis we place on intelligence. You know, you see what's going on. And I'm all for our — I want everything to be done properly. But you see in Mosul — I've been reading about Mosul for four months. For four months, I'm reading about Mosul. We're going to be attacking Mosul in four months. We're going to be attacking it in three months. And we're going to take the leaders of ISIL. Oh, did I say ISIL? ISIS. ISIS. I don't like saying ISIL. We're going to take. I don't like saying ISIL. We're going to take the leaders of ISIS. And we're going to get them. We're going to capture them. Okay. No, no, no. 
But you can't capture them because they know you're going in, right? So how do you capture them? Because about two minutes after they hear you're going into Mosul, they're, they're gone. Whatever happened to the element of surprise, folks? And now, as you know, you know, Mosul's tough. Those leaders are gone. They're someplace else. You go in, you do the job, you have the press conference a week later, not, a, not four months before. I wonder what the great General Douglas MacArthur, I wonder what the great generals of our country in the past, our past generals would think when they see what's going on. When they see ISIS using human shields, killing people, this is like medieval times. But you don't talk. You get it done. We don't want to talk. You get it done. We're going in. Here's, here's Obama. We're going in in four months to Mosul. Oh, I don't want to hear it. Don't, please. We're going in in three months. Two months. We're preparing. One month. That's right. He said red lines. We're drawing a red line. Oh, what a group. We have a president who is essentially incompetent. I'm telling you. Incompetent. And why is he always campaigning with Hillary Clinton? Why isn't he working on jobs? Why isn't he working for the vets on straightening out that? Because the Veterans Administration is a shame and a disaster. Why isn't he doing these other things? So he's always campaigning for Hillary. Hey, here's my question. Under the circumstances with what the FBI just announced, will he continue to campaign? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if they're going to be able to do that. But we want to support the men and women at Fort, you know, Fort Wakuka. Right? Do you know what the fort is? Wakuka. Home of the Army's Intelligence Center. Places like Marine Corps Air Station, Yuma. We'll have new aircraft. They won't have to get spare parts from those museums anymore. We also need a new policy that puts America first. We don't put America first, folks. It's almost like we have leaders that say, you know, we're negotiating with countries. We want to make sure they come out well. Us, don't worry about us. But they're doing it for a reason. They're doing it because people take care of them very well. Hillary's policies unleashed ISIS, empowered Iran, and spread death and destruction across the Middle East. Hillary and our failed Washington establishment have spent $6 trillion on wars in the Middle East, and now it's in worse shape than it was before we started. I mean, the Middle East is in far worse shape now. Our failed establishment has betrayed the American worker and the American family. They've dragged us into foreign wars that have made us less safe. And they've left our borders wide open at home. And they've shipped our jobs and our wealth away to other countries, which we're stopping immediately. When we lose our companies out of Arizona and so many other states, essentially all states, they move to Mexico. Take the example of carrier air condition. Indianapolis, Indiana, great place. By the way, how good is Mike Pence? Is Mike Pence good? Okay. Governor of Indiana. What a great job he's done. What a great job Mike has done. That was a good choice. See, that's good instinct. That's good judgment. Bernie Sanders said Hillary has bad judgment. And Podesta, you know, I don't know this guy Podesta. Whoever the hell he is, I would fire him so fast. He says nothing. No, no. He says nothing but bad things about crooked Hillary. That's all he said. The guy says nothing but bad things. He says nothing but bad. He has a memo. She has bad instincts. How would you, if somebody said that about me, even if it were true, I'd fire him. I'd fire him. Unbelievable. No, I, I really, the way he talks and the way other people talk about her, 
I mean, this WikiLeaks is fascinating. But they say so many bad things, but let's leave her alone. She's home now sleeping. Let's let her sleep. <laughs> to all Americans, I say it is now time for powerful leadership. Just think about what we can accomplish in the first 100 days of our presidency. We're going to have the biggest tax cut since Ronald Reagan, actually a little bit bigger. And Hillary wants to raise your taxes substantially. She wants to raise your taxes, which is pretty hard to believe, considering we're the highest tax nation in the world. We're going to eliminate every unnecessary job-killing regulation. We'll cancel every illegal Obama executive order. We're going to stop the massive inflow of refugees and keep radical Islamic terrorists the hell out of our country. We're going to rebuild our depleted military and take care of our great, great veterans. We're going to take care of for once and for all. We're going to take care of our veterans. We will reduce surging crime and support the incredible men and women of law enforcement. And I don't know, you know, this dishonest media, the world's most dishonest people. Terrible people. You can have a 100% home run and they'll make it look bad. They make it look bad. They're bad people. But I'll tell you, they don't tell you this. So the murder rate in the United States, the murder rate in the United States, it's the worst, the highest it's been in 45 years. Nobody talks about that. Nobody talks about that. We're going to provide school choice and put an end to Common Core. We're going to bring our education up. I was endorsed by the National Rifle Association, the NRA, great people. We are going to save our Second Amendment, which is under siege. And appoint justices of the United States Supreme Court, who will uphold and defend the Constitution of the United States. Americans are tired of being told by politicians that they have to defer their dreams to another day, but they really mean another decade. That's what they mean. They don't mean another day. They mean decades and decades away. Hillary has been there for 30 years, and she's accomplished nothing, just made things worse. She's the candidate of yesterday. We are a movement of the future. This is a movement, folks. This is a movement. This is a movement like our country has never seen before. And we are driving these characters crazy. They don't know. They are not happy. Our movement represents all Americans. Thank you. From all backgrounds and all walks of life. We're asking for the votes of Republicans, Democrats, independents, and first-time voters, and there's going to be a lot of them, believe me. We're fighting for every citizen who believes that government should serve the people, not the donors, and not the special interests. We are fighting to unlock the tremendous potential of every American community and every American family who yearn for a better future, a much better future. With your vote, we are just 10 days away from the change you've been waiting for your entire life. I will never let you down, I promise you that. I will never, ever let you down. We are a divided nation, 
We will not be divided any longer. We will be a nation that's powerful and strong, but a nation with love. Together, we will make America just again, just. We will make America strong again. We will make America safe again. We will make America wealthy again. And we will make America great again. God bless you, everybody. Get out and vote. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you, Arizona. All right, you guys. That was President Trump's rally from October 2016. Just gearing you up for President Trump's arrival today in Phoenix, giving a live look of the White House right now. Coming up just a little bit, I'm going to have Courtney Griffin, our reporter here, uh, Fox 10 Phoenix live uh, at the airport where President Trump will be landing soon for tonight's rally. That's next.
All right, everybody, hello and welcome to the Fox News Now stream. You're getting a live look in Yuma right now where President Trump is expected to land at about 1.45. And I have Trey, uh, or Troy, I'm sorry. I'll go by Trey, Trey. Hayden sure. is what I was trying to say. Troy Hayden up here with me, you guys. Uh, he was with me a little bit earlier today on the My 45 show, so it's good to yeah. have you back. That's a big day for Arizona. Good to be back. Yeah, you know, it's... Good to be here with you. So this is going to be interesting. Ed. Like I said, I love this is what this uh, channel to me is all about, that we can watch some live unfiltered stuff. And we've got uh, Courtney out there at the airport. We can see right now. Do we have the what picture we have up right now? Is this the right so here on right the right? So right now we've got live just looking in Yuma, but we are waiting for uh, Courtney to be ready to go so we can take her live. It does look like she'll be ready in just a few seconds. She's okay, ready to go. Yeah, thumbs, thumbs up. up. She's ready to go. So. Let's. Uh... So Courtney's there on the ground. This, this is an assignment I've had many times. I think it's so interesting waiting for the president uh, to arrive. I mean, they're on the tarmac. I'm sure Courtney's been through all of the security measures that we were talking about. Uh, Courtney, give us a little bit of a scene setter. Uh, what's going on behind you there? And uh, I know we're getting close. What's going on? Uh, hi, guys. Uh, a little audio trouble, but yeah. Um, yeah, I can hear myself. So I'm just going to take out my earpiece for a second. But we're here at the Marine Corps Air Station in Yuma. Really exciting. Uh, the process so far has been a little slow going, but uh, better to be safe than sorry. So we've had a lot of security checkpoints. We had to um, get all our cars checked, and then they brought us into the building that's right behind my photographer, Brian. And they searched us, and then we were able to come out here to the tarmac where everybody set up. There's a lot of media here. So it's a pretty exciting thing, but we're about an hour or so away from President Trump coming. So initially he was supposed to be here at 1.45. Uh, we're told now it's going to be 2 o'clock or 2.10 or so, so not too much later. But when uh, President Trump gets here, he's going to be going over, uh, I don't know if Brian can capture this far, but there's these little silver looking tops over there. That is the Border Patrol hangar that we're told President Trump is going to go tour and look at equipment there, including a Predator drone, a patrol boat, and truck. And then we're told he is expected to go into a closed door briefing. And then after that, he is going to meet with Marines. So while he's uh, here right near the U.S. and Mexico border, President Trump can review his vow to build a wall and talk about tougher immigration policies. The visit comes as, you know, the administration is pushing, pushing, or pushing to tighten the immigration enforcement and begin the push for funding to start that construction of the border wall. So again, right now we're about mm, an hour out. Um, Guys, we're the only ones out here, so I hope I'm making you happy right now because you can see everyone else is inside. It's about 105 degrees out, so definitely brutal out here, but it'll be a great afternoon. President Trump's going to be here soon. There's going to be some people right over there in that little fenced-off area where he's going to do some meet and greets. We also saw um, some people in the building here behind us lined up going through security. So there's some lucky folks that are going to be right here probably to meet the president. And then I know Brian was showing these steps here, but looks like that's where the president could possibly uh, get up and start waving for to everybody. All right, so I'm putting my earpiece back in and let me see if I can hear you guys. All right, Courtney. Yeah, sorry about the uh, audio problems out there. And yeah, I'll probably pull it back out again after we ask the questions and things. But I will say, you know, it, it looks like it's a typical uh, kind of marine uh, we don't hear anything. You know, base, a military base out there that you're waiting for. I always think it's interesting when you look back, and you showed us a second ago, but they had the, the sharpshooters up there on the roof and all the different security measures that you're dealing with when a president comes into town, even on a secure military base. Yeah, it's extremely uh, important, I guess, you know, to have all of those security measures in place way before he comes in, which is obvious. I mean, it's the president of the United States. But right. um, it's very interesting just to see how... Um, fast the city of Phoenix responds to something like this. All of the leaders that were speaking at that security press conference yesterday, Paul Penzone, city council leaders, chief of police, chief of fire, all getting together and talking about the different uh, security measures. So I think that's kind of cool that the city comes together and is able to pull that together so quickly. Can you go back and show that uh, picture of them again? That, this is what I was talking about earlier when we were talking about it, was that, that flatbed truck as Brian's kind of panning around there. So yeah, so everybody gets up on a kind of a flatbed truck and you all line up, and that's where all the pictures you're going to see of the president arriving 
uh, are going to be taken from. And so, you know, there's probably a, a network camera or two up there or they're going to grab it. And so all the pictures you see of him arriving will come off that flatbed. I always That's think it's cool. uh, neat being on a military base, too. Have you ever spent much time on a military no, base? No, have you? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, many times. But it's like you, you think you're going to be there, and it's kind of like out of the movies where everything is you know, like super high tech, whatever, but that's generally what a military base looks like right there. A lot of low slung, kind of government <laughs> issue buildings. And I think, Brian, I, I, I'm assuming you can hear us. Are those uh, security members or maybe even sharpshooters up on top of that roof that are back there? Because you'll see that quite often. You'll oh, see yeah. members of a local SWAT team or something like that up on top of the roof uh, as the president comes in. So, because basically, they want to be able to see all the surrounding areas so they if there's a threat that's coming at the president they want to be able to deal with that threat. that is incredible and they're actually on top of that what is it that a truck there that they're on top of no they're on top of, of a roof it looks like that's just like a low slung building no but before like um but you were explaining the shot that they were showing earlier they were all in that flatbed truck right with that's all of the, the media that's yeah. so cool that they were um that they were doing that and then they're obviously so right there right there yeah, yeah they yeah. always seem to bring like a big flatbed and just kind of set it there and that's where you are and it's nice because it gives you a little bit of height yeah because air force one is you know several stories tall it's big yeah it's, it's huge. Some, yeah you know the thing is you don't get up <laughs> the, the way we travel now you go from a term you go from like a terminal that's right. raised up when you think about it, probably a couple stories off the ground, yeah. into a plane that's up that high. But Air Force One just rolls up there. There's no terminal. <laughs> and so you're standing next to this huge plane, one of the biggest planes in the world, yeah. the 747. Have you seen it in person? Oh, yeah, oh, many times. You're kidding. So no. what is it like seeing it in person? Oh, it's just, it's, it, what it really does, in my opinion, it exemplifies and it really shows you the power and the might of the United States yeah. in a single vehicle because you know, like I said, a 747 is huge. It pulls up right in front of you. It's loud. It's beautiful. It is immaculate. It's like you could eat dinner off the, <laughs> the wings of that plane. No, seriously, the, the team that takes care of that, it's a whole wing of the Air Force that takes care of it. And they just keep it absolutely immaculate. And uh, wow. it's shining and it's just, and you know that the most powerful man in the world is on board the plane when it pulls up. So I mean, I, it's. I wonder what they're serving for for meals on that as well. You know, when we fly, coach, we don't eat like the way the president <laughs> eats. But I'm pulling up some fun facts um, about Air Force One just because um, I think it's kind of cool to to read about it because when I was seeing live pictures inside of it, I mean, he's got a whole office in there, a bedroom. Oh, it's yeah. like a, a, a beautiful apartment in there. Um, so let me pull up some. You probably know more than I do because you were saying you're a little bit into the whole aviation thing and you kind of know that it's a huge 747 right. um, but I was wondering if there was any facts about it that we might not know it says the new b21 which was revealed last year improves on vis invisibility to radar detection yeah so there's a whole bunch of stuff on there that makes sure the president's safe while he's in the air yeah and you know uh, I know there are stretches of the trip where he